Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, Matt Bennett, good morning. Good morning, buddy. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Hey, we've got a uh, three-day weekend coming up. President's Day is Monday, and the markets are closed. Do you have big plans for President's Day? Yeah. You know what? Uh, it's it's travel season, and to be honest with you, uh, uh, I usually go speak on President's Day because it's a day that I can go do that, and the markets aren't open. And so uh, i got to travel to... Uh, sunny beautiful iowa and do oh, wow. a couple of meetings on uh, monday which whatever it is what it is uh um uh, you know it'll be it'll be a good time looking forward to it actually uh uh and not having to miss markets for a day whenever i'm out speaking so i'm going to uh so we're off monday i'm gonna fight tyranny as our founding fathers would have liked um i'm kidding i'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna do my taxes <laughs> which is the exact opposite of uh fighting tyranny Guys, the grain markets are mixed here uh, early on Friday morning. Matt, before we start, I've got to do a quick plug here. I did a video yesterday with Pete Meyer uh, from S&P Global. He is sharp as a tack. Uh, ethanol EVs and jet fuel. Guys, you got to watch this video. It's absolutely fantastic. Not because I'm in it, but because Pete's in it. Uh, sign up for the premium deal today, guys. 50 bucks a month. I will send this over to you uh, this morning. Matt, I've got a headline that I wanted to start off with, which is crazy. Um, they are talking about frost in Argentina during the summer. Um, they're talking about frost over the next couple of days, which could damage the country's soybean crops. It's February in Argentina is is summer. Like your average daily highs are in the 80s. So they're talking about frost. I mean, is this is this like, I'm not a farmer, but this sounds like the growing season from hell. I mean, hot and dry to start, drought, and now summer frost possibilities. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it seems like when it rains, it pours for some of these folks. But yeah, you're right. I mean, you typically aren't going to see, for instance, in the middle of central Illinois in August, uh, uh, you know, some sort of a frost event. Yeah, you know, I've heard about a couple of them. I believe that there was actually one the year I was born, uh, you know, in 74. They talk about there was a there was actually a really early frost and it caused all kinds of havoc. But uh, depending on how many acres are, are, are affected, there's no doubt that it's going to impact quality. You know, I mean, you can't hurt Hardly get things to ripen. It's just a real pain in the butt. So depending on how widespread it is, it could be quite an issue. Okay. This was the headline this morning. This is the forecast. I'm not seeing the frost in the forecast. This is the Euro and this is what's expected to be the minimum temperatures uh, tomorrow. And that's going to be the coldest day here over the next week. So maybe in some of these like far Eastern or Northern areas, but these aren't your big soybean areas. Your big soybean areas are down here where your lows are going to be like in the forties. So, I mean, I guess that they say there's a frost chance, but it's, it doesn't look probable uh, to me at least. Right. And, and I mean, I think in, in all, all likelihood, you're probably sensational. They, they are sensationalizing it a little bit. If there's going to be a frost somewhere, it sounds good to kind of get people fired up and uh, uh, maybe it's going to make some headlines, but uh, hopefully it's uh, not real widespread if that's there at all. It looked to me like the weather for Argentina was going to improve just a little bit as far as that front going through. Yeah, uh, It's supposed to bring a little bit of rainfall. So you know, might be able to shore things up just a little bit. And I, I mean, my personal opinion is uh, uh, USDA may be closer than maybe uh, like what Rosario is. I, I think a lot a lot of times those guys go a little bit too far too fast and uh you know maybe maybe that uh, soybean number is closer to 40 than 35. there's some debate here so um this was from the buenos aires grain exchange they're talking about the the polar event or frost they've got the crop at 38 but they've got a downward bias and they think they're going to adjust lower usda is still at 41 so it, it kind of remains to be seen um this is a graph i pulled this is their average uh, temperatures like mid February. I mean, overnight lows are usually upper 60s, highs in the 80s. It's a crazy weather anomaly. I mean, what they're going to see, even if they don't get the frost. Um, some of the crop estimates for Brazil are being cut. Uh, Ag rural, they're pretty well followed. They're down to 150.9. They were 152.9 previously. They're talking about drought in southern Brazil. Um, they're not really talking about the uh, harvest delays as as being a reason for a smaller crop and still a monster crop. Um, is this a big deal or no? Yeah, I don't know how big of a deal it is overall. If you let's say you're 151, I mean, total South American production is going to be up year on year. We know that, okay. But I, I guess whenever I look at it, you know, I, I've talked to a couple of growers, I've sent them messages on Twitter, asking what kind of uh, yields they were looking at, and you know, you're talking a lot of uh, beans that are getting harvested currently, 75, 80 bushel beans in places, and so uh, getting a handle on the total crop size in Brazil is just a tough thing to do. It's such a massive area that yeah. you're looking at. So you know, I don't know if you're above 150. In my opinion, you're still looking at uh, 
a massive South American crop. So, um, you know, I, I think if you start getting below 150 psychologically, it could make quite an impact. But, uh, you know, I still think you're somewhere in the 150s because I think the beans are just that good in, in too many areas. OK, here's some statistics. Uh, this is this is how the numbers have played out the last several months. Back in September, in the September WASD, USDA said Brazil soybean production was going to be 149. They said Argentina was going to be 51. So that's a 200 combined. Uh, that was the preseason expectation from USDA. Now, take this number from today. Say Brazil drops to 150. Say Argentina, worst case, is 36. You're talking 186 combined. That's a difference of 14 million metric tons, which is 514 million bushels. I mean, that's more than twice the U.S. carryout. That's a big deal. And that's like, you look at a bean chart, why have we trended higher for the last three or four months? I mean, that's your reason why is, is that discrepancy, I would imagine. I totally agree. And I think, you know, it, it kind of got started, of course, and we've talked about this before, but with Argentina, you know, with Argentine uh, dryness, uh, that time of year, you're always going to get this soybean meal market to take off and go. You look yeah. at that chart, you know, back into December time frame, and you just uh, every single day you skyrocketed. And so you kind of seen the shine come off of this uh, soybean meal market here this week. Uh, you know, overall, you know, you got above 500 and I just feel like the buying uh, ran out, but you're correct. I mean, if you're going to drop 500 million bushels it's going to be a substantial difference uh you know whether we're actually going to drop that much off of the estimates previously i think is is the big question without getting into too much detail here the meal market is uh interesting to me because short term like with this argentina thing you've got some friendly fundamentals certainly but then you look big picture at this crush uh, crush expansion in the united states I mean, we are almost I'm not going to say there's no guarantees in anything when it comes to markets, but we're going to have a glut of meal once all these new crush plants come online. I mean, we're going to have more meal than we know what to do with the way that it looks to me. Uh, on to the next piece of news here. Biden intends to speak with President Xi to diffuse tensions over the uh, spy balloon. He had some quotes here. I expect to be meeting with President Xi and I hope we have a uh, this is a direct quote. <laughs> we're going to get to the bottom of this. Um, so he makes no apologies here. He says he's going to try to responsibly manage competition with China so that it doesn't uh, veer into conflict. Anthony Blinken's in Germany. I think today he may speak with China's top diplomat. Um, there's some back and forth sanctions that continue. China sanctioned uh, Lockheed Martin and also Raytheon recently because of arms sales to Taiwan. Uh, it feels to me like China's just going to buy from the U.S. Like they're going to buy what they need from us, but like not anything more than that. Oh, for sure. And I think whenever it gets right down to it, let's let's say that for whatever reason, we've got a ton of cheap meal moving forward, like you just referenced. Uh, is China going to buy off of us if they're ticked off? Yeah, because we've got cheap meal. I mean, you know, they can talk about uh, how they're ticked off, how they're frustrated. Yeah. And to be honest, this whole deal with, with the balloon, I mean, who knows what the actual story is and what's really going on? You know, I do see the headlines as well, just like you do. I think that there's certainly some, uh, oh, I don't know, tension, if you will. But at the same time yeah. i think that this has all been kind of worked out behind closed doors already anyway it's like a cold war-ish situation scenario to some extent i think but yeah i mean i think uh, i'll go to export sales next i think china was on the sheet for both corn and soybeans last week um corn sales were actually really good above a million metric tons for i think the second or third consecutive week that's like 40 million bushels uh mexico china colombia were the largest corn buyers so we've we've done better in in corn exports is this a trend or blip on the radar you know, you've got to think it's a trend. You've got to hope it's a trend. Uh, you know, as hope. you see bean shipments back off substantially, yeah. we know that uh, corn shipments typically pick up. Well, we got to have sales to get shipments, you know. Uh, the sales have just been pretty darn rough. Shipments have been uh, pathetic, uh, to say the least. And so, you know, we're we're basically uh, entering prime time. And so, yeah, this is, uh, you know, I believe about four weeks in a row of what I would call decent sales uh, overall, relatively yeah. speaking. And I, I think that we're heading in the right direction direction. I want to continue to see those things develop. Is China going to wait, you know, on the safrina crop? You know, if you start to uh, continue to talk about whether you're uh, pushing that crop back just a little bit because it's not getting planned as early as what they want, China's probably just a little bit nervous, quite frankly, because I do think that their needs are a little bit greater than what they've let on. I don't think that they want their stocks to do, uh, dwindle. I know there's been a lot of talk about potential issues. You know, what if they end up doing something in Taiwan? I think China knows darn good and well they're going to have a hard time buying stuff out on the world market if something like that happens. So if that's the case, I think maybe they're going to build up supplies just a little bit.
China's always a wild card and it's always kind of like this 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 gray area of information where we just don't know exactly what's going on. But especially right now, given like the reopening after three years of COVID lockdowns, the, the Taiwan situation, China's ties with Russia. I mean, there's so many variables here. Uh, soybean sales were just, I'd say, OK at 513,000. Uh, wheat sales, uh, not good again at 8 million bushels. Uh, no surprise there. We had some uh, rain and snow here the last few days. Did you have snow? No, uh, I mean, you know, it spit a little bit of something last night, to be honest with you. We really haven't had any snow. It's just been kind of cold and dreary, um, you know, but overall the weather's been uh, so, so we thought we were going to get more rainfall actually this week. And to be honest with you, I'd say a lot of folks are, are a little bit concerned about how dry it is. So, um, you know, I mean, we're not dry, dry. It's just a matter of, we, we did, you know, we're supposed to get like maybe half inch to an inch of rain this week. And I don't know if we got a 10th. Yeah. Um, if you look at this map of precipitation that's on my screen here, this is the last 72 hours. A lot of like the, the driest areas of the country, like these areas of the Southern Plains or Kansas, Western Oklahoma, Texas, Nebraska, South Dakota. I mean, they're still dry. And it seems like a lot of the precipitation that we've seen a lot of these systems, just like they begin here in like this, this uh, you know, central or eastern part of Kansas, and then they work their way east and that they just don't catch those Western areas, which are still like the driest areas. This system that had been on the radar is kind of moving its way out to the east here this morning. Uh, you look at the drought monitor and it's like, it, it almost looks like that precipitation map from the last three days. It's like the same same areas keep catching uh, some rain and have seen some drought alleviation in the central Corn Belt. But the West is still a problem. Absolutely. I was just uh, pretty close to Wichita this week and got to talk to a couple of growers and, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of growers just sitting there at that meeting, just saying, you know what, we're dry as a bone. We've got to get something going in here uh, sometime soon. Uh, some of the folks that I watch, you know, a fair amount of snow cover in the Rockies should give us an opportunity uh, that some of these guys would get some relief at some point. Uh, you know, I think that it, it could have big implications if you could go ahead and kind of uh, heal these pastures up, for instance, Joe, I know we don't talk about cattle typically, but that's something that uh, if you would actually retain some heifers this year, uh, yeah. man, this live cattle market could just absolutely explode, but uh, it's already fairly rich, but you know, they need to get some rainfall uh, bottom line. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, CFTC is going to delay or does not have a commitment of traders report again uh, this week. I I don't even care anymore. Does this does this matter to you? Uh, you know, I don't know that it matters to me, but I think it's kind of a joke. I mean, it'd sure be nice to see some transparency here on what's going on. Uh, you know, you can make all the excuses in the world, but uh, uh, bottom line is kind of need to know what's going on here. It'd be nice to see fair reporting and, and to understand what uh, positions were for some of the bigger players. But what are you going to do? I mean, you can't fight City Hall. Only in the government does that pass for uh pass for work, I guess. Um, the outside markets this morning, US dollar is actually sharply higher, I would say. Stock market's getting beat up a little bit. The S P's down 30, the Dow's down 180, gold's down 24 bucks, crude oil cannot hold a rally down 230 this morning. It's close to 76 bucks even. This crude market just uh uh not on on real solid footing here. No, it's not. It just seems like it's it's kind of a range bound situation. Seventy to eighty seems to encapsulate uh, where we might want to be. Yeah, uh, dollar screaming higher. No question about it. The dollar is really wreaking havoc on some of your commodities this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Hey guys, three day weekend, so I am off Monday. I'll be back Tuesday. Uh, Matt, thanks for joining me early this morning. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Absolutely. Thanks, bud. See you.